Hi, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. Welcome to my little uh, precarious perch uh, in this river overlooking one of Scotland's most magnificent mountains. Now I've just put my foot through the ice trying to get out here and I'm soaked up to the, up to the knee on my right side. So if I suddenly fall over and die, I'll try not to let that interfere with this week's video. Now, this is one of the most famous mountains in Scotland. I'm going to name it because it is super, super famous. It's the Bucolet of Moor. And just down the river there, there's a very famous location with a waterfall, and it's one of Scotland's most iconic calendar shots. And I'll confess that uh, I haven't photographed it in about five or six years, primarily because it's been turned into a bit of a swamp with too many people going there, mostly tourists to be fair, it's not just photographers that go there uh, and the whole area has kind of been destroyed. I remember when it was all beautiful heather or pristine snow and now it's just a peaty bog. Um, now I've come onto this river because we're, we've had this amazing fall of snow and the Bucolet of Moor is looking utterly resplendent this morning. It's about 11.15 in the morning so it's not golden hour by any means. And I just thought I was going to come down onto the river here and try and find some interesting foregrounds to put my 12mm prime lens through its paces. Uh, I had to literally get the mothballs off it the other day because I hadn't used it in so long. Uh, but I found this composition that I'm really excited by. And this is the thing with wide angle photography. The tripod is very, very low. The foreground is taking up a significant part of the frame and it complements the Bucolet of Moor here. This jaggy rock is just absolutely full of energy and dynamics. The water flowing through the frame takes us up towards the mountain, and this is pretty much as classic as you can get in terms of wide-angled landscape photography. So I'm gonna carry on before my foot turns into a block of ice, um, but yeah, it, I've missed this so much, you know, shooting, ingenious little compositions. I haven't done this in so long. It's such a difference from shooting with 500 or 400 millimeters and small scenes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, whoa! <laughs> so as you can see, it's a bit precarious here. But what I wanted to just rediscover was the joy of shooting incredibly beautiful landscapes. And the thing about this is, when the warm weather comes through later this week, all of this is going to go, the ice is going to thaw, the snow is going to thaw, the mountain is going to change character again. So this is a little unique moment in time that we're exploring, engaging with, feeling excited about. And that's the definition of small scene photography, but we've magnified it to the grand, majestic, beautiful highlands of Scotland. So yes, uh, landscape photography, as someone commented on a post of mine the other day, it's from the tiniest leaf to the full moon and everything in between. So, yeah, I'm going to get back into this. Um, yeah, and we'll, then we'll dive back into the studio. So what an incredible experience that was. It's literally so long since I've done this type of photography with any great passion. There was that one video uh, back at the tail end of last year also in uh, the Glencoe area, um, but I very quickly moved on to a 24-70. Once you have a 14, uh, a 12 mil lens on your camera, they distort reality hugely. Um, now, with this uh, first composition, what I was doing was I actually got the, the camera really, really close to this pointy rock. And we're probably talking something like that, about 12 inches, 30 centimeters, something like that. And what that does is, it makes it unusually large in the foreground there. And I think this is the beauty of really wide angled photography is that you start distorting how the world looks and the visual relationships become kind of odd. In this photograph here, there's not a huge amount of distortion on this 12 mil lens. So things don't appear to get unusually elongated. So the structure of everything fits really, really nicely. The key is to be close enough to your main subjects so that they don't get tiny in the frame. Sometimes if a mountain is a long way in the distance, they can get tiny and, and you have to start focal length blending and things like that to try and re-establish uh, the scale relationship. So this feels actually, the final photograph I've made here, feels 
very much how it was to be there. Uh, and I think that's nice for me. It feels authentic. If you went to this place, that is pretty much what you would see. Now, the shutter speed was a longer shutter speed. It's about 30 seconds there. So you can see we've got this uh, up in the, the frame here. We've got enough atmosphere coming off the top of the mountain there, and it, it gives it a bit of energy. We've talked a lot about shutter speed over the last few months on this channel and how important it is to convey uh, atmosphere and energy. If this had been a faster shutter speed, you get detail and the detail can somehow compete with the structure on the face of the mountain. There's already quite a lot of detail in this photograph. I want the eye to come in and explore these details down in the rock there. I've made the mid-ground uh, somewhat uh, nondescript, I suppose. It's got enough uh, presence to feel uh, as if it's part of the photograph, but I'm not wanting to draw attention to it. This shot is about this pointy rock and the amazing mountain there. And then this little area off on the right hand side is another little highlight area. So the key with this type of photography is to understand we have this thing called the hierarchy of light where the brain is looking for the brighter areas. So we have this slope on the peak here, we've got the mountain there and we've got this face on the pointy rock there. The only colour that's been injected into this frame, and as I said, it was about 11, 11.30 in the morning. So there's no warm light particularly. Um, but we do have the reds on that rock there. There was the geology under the water surface is granite. So it has this beautiful warmth to it also. Uh, and you can see we're seeing a little bit of that through the surface of the water as well. So we've managed to get some warm tones into this cold scene. And that warm to cool transition, again, something I talk about an awful lot, especially in the Color of Meaning ebook, is that transition, warm to cool, light to dark, detailed to atmospheric. The more of those transitions you can get. And obviously this photograph is very much about geometry, pointy rocks, pointy mountains, and uh, yeah, I, I'm very keen on this. Now, once we'd been here for a wee while, the, the conditions were changing all the time. Mist was coming uh, down Glencoe, enveloping the Bucholet of Moor, and then it would clear again. And you can see here at the back, that peak that was all bright and sunny is now obscured by this uh, band of uh, mist coming up the, up the glen again. And what this photograph demonstrates is two things. One is how close you can get wide-angled lenses to your foreground subjects. This foreground ice was about that far from the front of the lens. And it, the, at f22, this thing is focusing from that to infinity and everything is sharp. So there's no focus stacking in this photograph and the mountain and the foreground are both tack sharp. It is a joy of a lens, this Laowa 12mm Prime. It's Chinese. Uh, they make studio lights and stuff, uh, I think, Laowa, but they've made some incredible wide-angled lenses too. So what we have here is a very different composition. This is about flow. This is about directionality, but it's also in my mind, it's about what's happening underneath the surface of the river here. The ice is a strong seasonal element. It has that luminosity that I talked about um, in some of my other videos. Ice, I love that cool, luminous, reflective nature of ice. But the rocks under the surface, we have this combination of this blue colour, which in Gaelic is unye, uh, which is this sort of luminous, translucent, bluey green colour, which doesn't have a very good English uh, translation to it. Uh, and then we've got these lovely warm granite boulders. 
And if we zoom in there, you can see oh, this beautiful structure on the surface of the water reflecting what's underneath it, reflecting what's above it. And I really like that sort of, if I was into small scenes at all, then that's the type of thing I'd be pointing my camera at. On this one, it's the, we have our cool tones down in the bottom left, moving into these warmer submarine or uh, under the water surface tones. And then we've got these red boulders and all of these things help to steer and shape and mold the, the experience of looking at the photograph. And then of course, the elephant in the room is the Buchaletta Moor there at the back, rising resplendent at the back of the composition. I like this one a lot actually. Um, it's it's less uniform, I think, than the first composition. I think if I pull them both up onto the screen and we look at them side by side, they're they're very different in terms of their their feel to them. Um, but for for saying we just hit that river almost at a random point. Um, it's amazing how quickly you can find things that are harmonious and work. With like with with this type of photography, the Buchaletta Moor is clearly the most important subject. It's this beautiful pyramid of a mountain, and it's been photographed for generations by hundreds of photographers, millions of photographers probably. And it's a very familiar mountain in Scotland. It's on the front of loads of calendars. It's it's a famous peak. You can't miss it when you're driving through Glencoe. And what I mentioned at the start of this video is the main area that people photograph it from is beautiful. We've got this little waterfall and there's a tree on the left hand side and it's a very nice composition. But the area has been so badly eroded. Um, I don't want to be part of that. I would never take clients to that place. Um, I, I, I would much rather spread ourselves out a bit more in this landscape. But it just goes to show that there are things everywhere that can work. Um, if you have an open mind and are prepared to spend a little bit of time exploring. But um, yeah, there's very different feel on both of these uh, photographs. Um, the, the distribution of light and luminosity is quite different in both of them. You would probably say that the one on the right is a slightly more soothing. It doesn't have as many dynamic tones, uh, the, the brights, don't feel as bright somehow. It's it's a little bit more somber, a little bit more reflective. And the one on the left feels a bit more dynamic. It's got that red, warm colour in the rocks there, which really helps to add energy. So what I think is the takeaway from this type of thing, uh, this type of photography, in relationship to all the other things that I photograph, all these small scenes and intimate scenes and little waterfalls, and we will be coming back to some of that photography in the videos coming up over the next few weeks. But it just goes to show that the same principles are working here as they are in small scenes. We have luminosity, we have contrast, we have color, we have geometry, and we have atmosphere. All five of those things are demonstrated in this frame. These are both four or five uh, vertical compositions. They look very nice together. I think they're, they represent the place, they represent the time. So in a way, they are, they are still, um, they still represent the same thing as my small scene photography does, which is they are diary uh, notes from my engagement with that place at that time, the little mementos for me. And hopefully uh, through the way they've been presented, they can also express the beauty, the majesty, the harmony, the, the feeling of cold atmospheric weather. Uh, so they are still expressive. They are still um, quite articulate uh, in terms of how they convey my emotional relationship with my home country and we're very lucky to have this very close to home. Um, so yeah, hopefully you like these. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kind of lost for words 
the only word I can really think of to describe that was epic. Uh, beautiful mountain, amazingly atmospheric weather, ice on the, on, the, on the river there, snow on the rocks, flow, balance, juxtapositions. I don't say the word epic very often when I'm talking about more intimate scenes. You talk about introspection, you talk about... Uh, you know, engaging with something in a, in a much more uh, internal way. It becomes very personal. It becomes, it becomes much more introspective and, and quiet emotions. Whereas this is just blinking epic. I mean, it was just amazing. It was so energizing. You feel so alive, you know, when you're here. So I'm really grateful for, for getting that uh, uh, 12 mil prime back out of my cupboard in the office there and sort of finally uh, getting back into it and using the filters and using the NDs to, to kind of manage time and manipulate time. So I'm kind of looking forward to diving into that more complex processing because, you know, you're focused, or not as much focus stacking with the 12 mil, but exposure blending, looking for the details under the water, trying to balance a good exposure for the sky, you know, making sure everything fits in there. So yeah, kind of, uh, energized and excited and it's still a beautiful day it's noon uh, and we're still out here just surrounded by this most incredibly beautiful landscape so uh, yeah it's going to be a struggle to go home my foot is absolutely frozen solid uh, lesson number one is always use the wellies that are in the back of the car so uh, that was my learning point for today but for now maybe have a little snack a bit of lunch and a cup of coffee and uh, warm up a little bit but uh from the Highlands of Scotland, thank you very much. And if you love this stuff, hit that old subscribe button, give us a thumbs up um, and uh, live this beautiful landscape for a wee while. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.